chord. Let's review for just a minute. What we talked about last time, and y'all said you're, you, you're good about setting each piece to zero, right? If yeah. I have something like... How do I solve that? Right, because when I'm multiplying two things together and they equal zero, then that tells me that one of the two must be zero, right? So that's pretty easy. All right, guys, if y'all put your computers away, please. Gavin, computer away. Plus seven, plus seven. Okay, so plus seven, so that's pretty easy, right? But the problem comes when they don't look like this to start with, right? Like, what if, where's your notebook? Or some paper? You can't write because your head hurts. How are you going to pass this test? Mr. B, you write on the book right now. What test? That's why I'm telling them to write it down while we don't see nobody writing it down. So, then we looked at some things like this. And I asked you to factor out the greatest common factor. So the first thing we have to do is say, what is the greatest common factor? So here, what is the GCF? Uh, five. Seven. Oh. Don't divide them. You want the biggest thing that you can divide both of them by. With Seven, no remainder. W to the Seven W to the second. This isn't my computer, y'all. It's kind of glitching on me a little bit. So, what is the greatest common factor of 7 and 35? Oh, the two W's? Because you could take two W's away from both of those W's. You, take, you need to take out the most amount you can, but you can't take any more than what one can give. Think about it in terms of money. Um, number 7 has $5 in his wallet, and number 35 has $2 in his wallet. You have to take the same amount from both people, but you, it's got to be the same amount, but of course you want to take the most amount of money, right? So how much money could you take from both of them? Two dollars, because it's got to be the same amount. So that's where the two comes from. Okay? Now, let's factor it out, because naming the GCF is different than actually factoring it out, right? So we put the GCF on the outside, and tell me what's left in here. Um, what would you multiply this by to get 7W to the fifth? To the what? 1W to the what, Taylor? Keep going. It's got five. You took two. What's left? What? What? Oh, I thought we were talking about the other number. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Oh, the divide. Do you That's right. Because remember, really, what we talked about distributing, but now we're opposite distributing. So we're dividing. Okay? Oh, Minus five. That's exactly right. So to check it, if I wanted to check to make sure that I was doing it right, I would distribute this through, right? What is 7W squared times W to the third? 7W5, right? And then if I come here, what is 7W squared times negative 5? There you go. Negative, though, 35W squared. Does that confuse anybody? No. Okay. Let's do one more like this because I feel like y'all just, it was kind of, maybe. Let's say I have 12A to the fifth plus 8A. Factor out the GCF. Four. Okay. Four is the coefficient GCF, right? What else? Four what? Four A. Well, it's just an exponent of one. It's imaginary. So if I put that on the outside, what's left inside? Three A. Yes. 
this plus two. I want you to do it on your paper. Oh my goodness. I guess work the problems with yeah, you. Why don't you do that? One more. Try this one on your own. On our own. Yeah, that means. Hey, Mr. Key, check it. Oh, you want me to check it? No, we don't need to check it. 12A to the fifth plus 8A. All right, 9M to the seventh minus 3M squared factor. Factor out the GCF. <clears throat> Tell me what you get. 3 what? She just told me the, okay, now factor it out and see what you get. No, you're good. So if I take a 3M squared out, Divide the numbers in front and subtract the exponents. 3m, no, not necessarily. 3m what? We took 2 away and it had 7 to start with, so it left me with 5. Minus what? 1. If you take it all, then it holds its place with the 1. Zaya likes to check it. 3 times 3 is 9. 2 plus 5 is 7. Minus 3m squared. So because these two look just alike, then it checks. So today we're going to build on this a little bit. I know. Sucking them teeth. Uh, Here's what we're going to do. Ready? It's okay. We're going to take an equation. Now we're going to solve. You know, we've been solving, right? We've been solving like what I showed you to start with. If I have something like this, and we set each one to zero, right? What if it doesn't look like that to start with? Okay, in other words, what if it looks like this? Okay. I'm going to give you some steps and we're going to work through them, okay? The first thing I want to do when I'm solving is make sure that equation equals zero. Okay, if it doesn't, then you're going to have to make it equal zero because we know we're going to end up using Gavin Einstein since you take that computer, take those earbuds out your ear, put that computer away. Hold your hands up. Da, ah, ah. Somebody starts. When it equals, once we equal zero, Zion. Mm -hmm. Take those off so you can hear me well. Then we're going to try to factor out a GCF. So it already equals zero, right? And then we're going to solve. Say it again. Greatest common factor. No, 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 no. We won't do least common. Not yet. All right, look at this one. It already equals zero, so step one is done, yes? Does it have a GCF? What's the GCF? Even more. 
One X, one X, right? One is the one is the greatest common factor of the coefficients, but then I could take an X away from both of them. Do we agree? What don't you understand? All right, listen, listen. This is what we did two days ago and yesterday. Okay, we're not. This is not. Yes, we did. This is nothing new here. We look for the biggest thing you can divide one and five by. And we look for the most number of the variables that we can take out. Oh, okay. same, it's the same thing. It, the only difference is there's an equal sign thrown in there. Okay? All right, so if the GCF is 1x, and it is, factor it out. What does the left side look like when you take that 1x out? X. X. Mm, you took an x out. What's left? Plus 5. Plus 5. It still equals zero, right? Mm -hmm. I just wrote it another way. Now, remember that zero product property we talked about? Mm -hmm. When two things multiply to give you zero, one or both of them is zero, right? Mm -hmm. X times X plus five. Here is one thing multiplied and two things multiplied. So when I solve them, that means that x could be 0 or what? This could be 0. The only difference is this is not x plus something. It's just x by itself. I still set it equal to 0. The first one's already solved. That's easy, right? <laughs> So what are my two answers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to do several more. Y'all stay with me. We'll see what time we finish up. All right, here's, let's do another example. I'm going to do at least three more examples with you. What's tricky? Let's do another example. Tell me my first step. Make sure it equals zero. Does it equal zero? Yes, we're going to do one that doesn't in just a second. All right, what's my next step? Find the GCF. So I've got two terms here. What is the GCF of 2x squared and 8x? 2x. Does everybody know where 2x comes from? Yes. No. All right. No? Okay. It goes on the outside, right? What's left inside the parentheses? X, well, close, not X squared, but just X, plus what? Four. That's correct. It still equals zero. Now, what do I do? We took a GCF out. Now we need to do what? Solve it. Solve it. How do we solve it? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> do the zero thing. Set 2x to zero. And then set x plus 4 to zero. Yes? Solve each one. Look at the first one. How do you get x by itself? You divide. Yep. Zero, that's one. How about the second one? Yes? Let's kick it up a little bit. 
This one. It doesn't equal zero. You're exactly right. I have to make it equal zero. So my question is, how do you make it equal zero? Oh, you do? Yes. Okay. To make it equal zero, I need to move the terms all to one side, right? A good little trick is whichever your your biggest um, exponent is, so in this case it's x squared. Your mama gave you that phone back? Yeah. Put it up. I'll, I'll do it. Well, whichever, whichever side you need to move them to keep the squared term or the leading coefficient the positive, okay? In other words, if I subtracted 6x squared, then this one would be negative. I don't want that one to be negative. I'd rather let this one be negative. Yes, so, so to move it, you subtract it. Now, if it was negative, then you would do what? add it, right? Like if this was negative 15x, then I'd add it to both sides. All right, so can I combine 6x squared and negative 15x? Why? They're not the same exponent. They're not like terms, okay? The base is the same, but not the exponent. That's absolutely right. So I just have to write it. 6x squared minus 15x, and because there's nothing left on this right side, it equals zero. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, now we'll go through and do everything else that we've been doing. So, first thing I want to do is GCF. Does it have a GCF? No. Oh, what? GCF of 6x squared and 15x. 3 what? 3x. Remember, this, this poor little fella's only got one dollar. This one's got two, so you can take a dollar from both of them. Okay? If I take a GCF out, I put the 3x on the outside. What's left inside? 2x minus everybody goes to zero. The 3x goes to 0, and then the 2x minus 5 goes to 0. You solve each one of those on your own, see what you get. For the first one, when you solved it, you divide by 3, and you get x equals? That's answer number 1. For the next one, what do you do first? Yes. And leave it like that. Leave it as a fraction, just like that. There is nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. No. Oh, come on now, y'all. Let's do one more. Well, but clearly y'all need to practice. No. 4x squared equals 2x. Does it equal 0? No. So what do I need to do first? Make it equal 0. Go ahead. That's right, Shasia. Subtract 2x. Yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all be nice, Shasia. All right, GCF it. GCF it. <laughs> four. That's bug. That ain't bug. What's the four? <laughs> What's the GCF? Four. <laughs> See, that's why we need more practice. Two, two. two what? X. Take it out. I didn't, that's an arrow. 
what's left if I take 2x out? Well, but you took you took the x away, so you just have to hold the place. If you take if your GCF is exactly the same as your last term, hold the place with a one. All right, everybody to zero. Ooh, some of y'all are going fast with those pencils. Yay! Zero is one of the answers. If I add one and divide by two, one half is the second answer. Yay! One more. I want to make sure that I cover everything that's in your homework. This one looks different. This one looks 12. Oh, wait. This one looks different. Yes, Saya, thank you. That's what I wanted you to see. This time the squared one's negative. And I want the squared one to be positive. So I'm going to add, instead of subtract, this one. Remember, you always want your biggest exponent first. So it's going to, and you not only want it first, you want it first and positive, right? Now GCF it. What's the GCF here? And think about it before you say it, because if you get it wrong, we're going to do another one. What's the GCF? Seven. Seven's right. Seven what? Seven X. Okay. When you take seven X out, you have what? Uh, uh, two. Six. Six. Am I done? No. That's right. You've got to do the zero thing. This means that 7x is zero. Or 6x plus 2 is zero. I'll give you a second and you try to solve that. Let's see what you get. Don't look up. I'm going to do it too so you can check when you're done. <laughs> 